One of the great spectacles of the year now on BBC One Scotland and for the very first time in high definition on BBC One, BBC HD. Live to Horse Guards Parade in London to join Hugh Edwards for Trooping the Colour. This is the Warrior, one of the family of armoured vehicles being used by British forces in the harsh conditions of Afghanistan. And over the past 12 months, the 1st Battalion Scots Guards have been among those on active service there. But today, they're swapping the Warrior for these smart tunics and bearskins as history is being made on Horse Guards Parade. For the first time ever, an armoured infantry battalion is taking pride of place at the Queen's Birthday Parade. It's a proud day for all of those taking part in the 59th birthday parade of the Queen's reign, but especially for the 1st Battalion Scots Guards, accompanied by the Pipers in their splendid Royal Stuart Tartan, because they have the honour of trooping their colour today. It's the first time for nine years that the 1st Battalion has provided the escort. Let's not forget, this time last year, they weren't here, they were serving in Afghanistan. They're due to return there on active service next year. But for 2011, we have all seven regiments of the Household Division present in London for the birthday parade. First time for a long time that's happened. And of course, they'll be remembering all those members of the armed forces, 77 of them, who've lost their lives on active service during the past 12 months. The thousands who attend this event every year do so to pay tribute and, of course, to enjoy the unbeatable display of military drill and music. Among those in the stands, heads of the armed forces, veterans and their families, diplomats, senior politicians, including the Prime Minister and Dr. Liam Fox, the Defence Secretary, already here. There'll be thousands, too, watching along the Mall. They'll be kept in place by the street liners men of the 1st Battalion Irish Guards who were deployed to Afghanistan until just a few months ago. It is in fact a very special day for the Irish Guards because their newly appointed Royal Colonel will be riding on parade for the first time. And that is Prince William, the Duke of Cambridge. He'll be emerging from Buckingham Palace in a short while. His wife Catherine will be watching the parade for the first time as a member of the Royal Family. A quick reminder those of you wanting to watch live, unedited coverage of this year's parade, especially that fly-past later on, just press the red button on the handset. But the hallmark of the parade year after year is that careful preparation, that attention to detail. Claire Balding can tell us more about that. This is one of the most impressive sights on parade, the drum horses. This is Achilles, known as, as Rodney. It's his fifth time on parade, so he's got bags of experience. He's had an early morning bath and a bit of a hairbrush as well. And he's got to show the way to this fella, because this is Celt. He's six years old. It's his very first time, isn't it? And he's still got a bit of bedhead going on here. But he'll be looking perfect. Now, they have to have lots of training. And this guy, Digger, is still... A novice. He's not allowed out yet. He's 20 hands high. He is the biggest horse in Great Britain, but they have to get used to the weight and the vibration of the jumps. Well, there are no horses for the Scots Guards. They're an armoured infantry battalion, and their chosen charger is the Warrior. We're on day three of our initial rehearsals for the, the Queen's birthday parade. We're sort of getting rid of the cobwebs, getting the format of the parade, back in at the, the heads of the guards, so that we're all thinking and singing from the same song sheet. Escort to the colour! The last time the battalion treat the colour was in 2002, and I'm hugely conscious of the history and tradition that has gone before us and all that we will be representing on the day. Time. Good. Although we're guardsmen, we are an armoured infantry battalion serving in an operational deployable brigade. So we have to bring the boys back to basics, you know, arms swinging together, basic foot drill, all these little movements we're trying to achieve. Force the left arms in against the body! This is the first time ever 
that uh, a non London district uh, Gars Battalion will troop its colour. So the boys need to put that extra bit of effort in because there will be a lot of eyes on the battalion. Personal drill's got to be a mark up, got to be smart. All your kit's got to be done perfectly. Your boots got to be gleaming, brass have got to be shiny. It is quite one thing having very limited ceremonial experience to being in front of the eyes of uh, the world and Her Majesty as the ensign. Trying to make sure that the colours are presented gracefully whilst not being dragged along the ground is a bit of a challenge for myself, uh, being not the tallest of guardsmen. The drill just now in the Queen's Birthday Parade is number one priority, but you need to keep on top of your like, soldiering skills because I'm on, I was on the drill square yesterday and now I'm doing the gunnery because as soon as we've finished in the Queen's Birthday Parade in June, we'll be preparing for our next tour of Afghanistan again. It'll definitely be a lot more challenging for us. The boys preparing with the warrior vehicles, they're gunning, they're driving, they're commanding, and then they're back on the drill square the following day. As guardsmen, we'll never say we're nervous, but uh, I'd be lying if I'm saying I'm not nervous for the boys. This time last year, I was always nervous for the boys when we were in Afghanistan, but knowing them as Scots guardsmen, then we'll stand tall and we'll show Her Majesty where our third foot guards have been since 2002. Here on Horse Guards Parade, the other aspect of their work, the 1st Battalion Scots Guards are the only armoured infantry battalion among the foot guards. They're the ones trooping their colour today. A few specks of rain, let's hope they clear away. The battalion with its five companies stationed in Catterick in North Yorkshire. The most senior company is right flank providing the escort today. Another of those companies, B Company, is providing number two guard today. And number three guard is provided by F Company Scots Guards. Let's have a look at the far end of the parade ground, formed up at right angles. That's number six guard, formed by number seven company Coldstream guards. And then next to them we have number five guard, provided this year by the Prince of Wales company Welsh guards. No Welsh guardsmen on parade for the past two years, so good to see them back. Number four guard, provided by Nijmegen company Grenadier guards. Most of the soldiers passing out of basic training spend time with Nijmegen company. There we have the focus of the parade, the colour, the Queen's colour of the 1st Battalion Scots Guards, bearing no fewer than 41 of the regiment's 93 battle honours. The colour party is protecting the colour until it's trooped down the ranks. Three members, the sergeant of the escort, Colour Sergeant Chris Millen, has 24 years of service in the Scots Guards, his fourth and final birthday parade. The sentries with him, Guardsman Christopher Vivas, Guardsman Thomas Himes, they've both served on the last tour of Afghanistan. Everyone on parade today taking their orders from one man. He's been talking to Claire Balding. We're behind the scenes here with Lieutenant Colonel Lincoln Jopp, who's field officer and brigade waiting. Very proud moment for you and for your battalion. Claire, it is, and we've got some great weather, and with a bit of luck, we'll be able to put on a fantastic parade for the Queen, for our families, and for the great British public, all of whom have been incredibly supportive of us, both when we were in Afghanistan last year and now that we're back. And for you, you have to form a very strong bond with this lady. This is Berniston. She's 19 now, and she knows what to do. She does. She's done the parade certainly more times than I have, more times than most guardsmen have. And she came up to Catterick, to our permanent home in North Yorkshire, in January, and I've tried to ride her pretty much ever since, and she's the apple of my eye. You've bonded. I think that's very fair to say, yeah. Is there any particular aspect of the parade that has been going through your mind? I think that the... The field officer has always got half an eye on the rain back. Uh, that's a bit of a moment. Uh, and I don't really start to enjoy the parade until after that's over. But um, I'm determined to try to enjoy it as well as uh, do my job as well. We wish you the best of luck and thank you so much. Claire, thank you. Well, someone who knows Lieutenant Colonel Job very well is my special guest today. Indeed, there he is commanding this parade himself back in 2009. So he's very familiar with every detail he is. Colonel Ben Farrell, who until last year was commanding officer of the Irish Guards and led the 1st Battalion on operations in Afghanistan. Ben, it's a great honour to have you with us today. Good morning, Hugh, and good morning to all the viewers at home. What are you looking forward to? Well, I'm hugely looking forward to seeing my very good friend uh, Lincoln as the uh, commander of the parade uh, put in a stunning performance. We see him considering what's before him, the scene, 
and in fact the responsibility. What do you make of that? Well, I remember this moment extremely well, under the arch, ready to come out. And uh, the sort of context is Lincoln reflected um, recently riding out with Prince William um, before uh, coming here today. And uh, Prince William said, well, of course, my grandmother knows this parade extremely well, and knows all the details of where everybody should be, what they should be doing, and what they should be saying. So uh, no pressure then, Lincoln. <laughs> but that's gives you a sense of how he'll feel now. We'll be measuring the pressure a little later on. Ben, thanks very much. We are, in fact, looking forward to a birthday parade with a distinctly Scottish flavour. Of course, we are boosted by the presence of no fewer than 28 pipers and drummers. A very special quality to the parade. They've been sharing their thoughts on the challenge. When they hear the bagpipes and they're away from home, all Scotsmen always think of home. We do take our pipes to Afghanistan with us and we take the drums, which gives us the opportunity to be able to play some morale boosting music to the, to the troops. We put the music together for the Queen's Birthday Parade whilst still out in Afghanistan. I spoke to Major Robertson via email and we put the, the tunes together. The music will be played by the mass bands of the Household Division and indeed the pipes and drums. What an amazing mix. Because I'm the junior piper, I'm really looking forward to performing on the Queen's Birthday Parade. I feel really proud wearing the Royal Stuart Tartan, which is the Tartan of the Regiment, and parading in front of our course, the Majesty of the Queen. Each member of the Pipes and Drums is a fully trained infantry soldier. I think quite often when people see us on parade, they don't actually even realise that we are soldiers at all. We're not just musicians. First and foremost, we are fighting soldiers. When I was in Afghanistan, uh, part of my job was also as an interpreter, uh, speaking to locals. We'd sit down, we'd have a cup of tea and a chat. The relationship with the locals helped the Scots Guards because they would come up to us and tell us where IEDs were. The Pages and Drums deployed with the battle group to Afghanistan during 2010, and unfortunately, uh, Cottle Monkhouse was uh, killed in operations. My friend Stephen Monkhouse was unfortunately killed during an ambush. He was posthumously awarded the Military Cross it's something that the, the pipes and drums have uh, had to bear and it's, it's something that will never be forgotten. The music from the pipes and drums will breathe a sense of passion and pride to those listening and marching to it. The minute that music strikes, there will be no doubt in anyone's mind that this could only have been Attributing the colour for the Scots Guards. The Crimson Pipe Banners on parade here at Horse Guards, reflecting the rich heritage and traditions of the Pipers and the Scots Guards. At Buckingham Palace, the first royal procession is about to leave. First carriage, we have the Duchess of Cornwall, we have the Duchess of Cambridge, Duke of York, and Prince Harry. The Duchess of Cambridge, of course, for Catherine, first time at the Queen's birthday parade as a member of the royal family. The first ceremonial occasion, if you like, as the Duchess of Cambridge. Six weeks ago, she was the centre of attention on her wedding day. Today, of course, still plenty of interest in her presence, her appearance, but the centre of attention today will be Her Majesty the Queen because it's her birthday parade. The crowds already voicing their enjoyment and appreciation. Claire Balding is with them. 
And to get in this position with the perfect view of the carriage procession, you have to be here very early, which these women were. What time did you get here? We got here about 7 o'clock this morning. <laughs> and your accent suggests that you've come from further away than just down the road. Oh, yes, definitely. We came all the way from Michigan in the United States, and we're here studying for a couple weeks, and we had to be here. Now, what is it in particular about Trooping the Color that has grabbed you? Well, we are just so excited to see the members of the royal family after the wedding. We are so excited to see Kate and William, of course. So that was so exciting. And I'm just going to have a chat here because where have you come from? We've come from near Cambridge today. Now, did you come here for the royal wedding? Uh, we watched the royal wedding on the telly and we, we came down on the Monday to see all the flowers in the Westminster Abbey. Fantastic. And down the mound to get the atmosphere. You've had a great position here. Are you now going to move elsewhere? We'll probably wait and see all the horses go backwards and forwards, marching on together. It's fantastic to see all those horses. But um, no, we, we're waiting to see Prince William, or the, the Duke of Cambridge, come from our area, <laughs> okay. um, and to come pass on the horse for the first time in the Troop in the Colour. All right, well, I'll let you concentrate again. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Royal Salute, sounded by the trumpeter of the Sovereign's Escort, Lance Corporal Benjamin Ruffer of the Lifeguards, and he signals the Queen's departure from the palace for this birthday parade of 2011. Queen celebrating her official birthday. It's seven weeks after Her Majesty's actual birthday, which is in April, and uh, that was, of course, her 85th birthday. Tradition going back to the days of Edward VII, who created the official birthday in June. There we have Prince William, Duke of Cambridge. His first appearance at the birthday parade as Colonel of the Irish Guards. The other royal colonels, the Prince of Wales, the Welsh Guards, Duke of Kent, the Scots Guards, and the Princess Royal of the Blues and Royals. Duke of Edinburgh, who celebrated his 90th birthday yesterday. The Queen and the Duke have had an incredibly busy few months. Back to mid-May, when they made that historic state visit to the Republic of Ireland, the first ever by a British monarch to the Republic. And then just a few days later, they hosted the state visit by the President of the United States and Mrs. Obama. And as part of that ceremonial arrival, the 1st Battalion Scots Guards provided a guard of honour for that state visit by President Obama. And there'll be much in evidence today, of course. And to underline how busy the Queen and the Duke are going to be. In the autumn, we already know that they'll be making a visit to Australia. It will be the Queen's 16th official visit to Australia, and that'll include the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, which takes place in Perth. Along the approach road, not far from Horse Guards Parade, Duchess of Cambridge and other guests in the first carriage There in the second carriage we have the uh, Lady Louise Mountbatten-Windsor, the little seven-year-old who uh, played her role wonderfully as a bridesmaid on Royal Wedding Day. And her father, the Earl of Wessex, there too. 
Number three guard has opened up, ready to welcome these royal guests. And when they cross onto the parade ground, the national anthem will be played. Prince Harry saluting the colour as they cross the parade ground here at Horse Guards. And already in the stands we have the Prime Minister. Some of his guests clearly prepared for the wet weather. Hopefully they won't need those tops and acres of plastic as the morning goes on. And there they go towards the Horse Guards arch because they'll be watching the parade. From the windows above the arch, we can see that they're dressed, ready for the occasion. The office once used, many years ago, by the Duke of Wellington. It, of course, is the best view of the parade ground. A magnificent sight along the Mall. And the brigade major leading the way. Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Speed of the Scots Guards. It's his sixth birthday parade, but crucially, it's his first parade in this role. Took over the role uh, of Brigade Major from Lieutenant Colonel Jeremy Bagshaw, who is now serving in Afghanistan. Um, but Jeremy was very keen to send a message to his successor today. I've been a Guardsman now for 20 years, and um, it's been an enormous privilege to have been a Brigade Major and to have run state ceremonial. And the Queen's birthday parade is the pinnacle of that. To the uh, Brigade Major on the day, I'll just say, uh, don't fall off. Have too many people watching, and you might be late for the parade. And the other one is, uh, enjoy it, enjoy it. I did, and um, you, know, you rehearse so much. There's not very much to worry about. You just go with the flow, and it's a cracking day. Jeremy Bagshaw's advice to Andrew Speed of the Scots Guards, who's uh, leading the Sovereign's procession today as Brigade Major. This year we have an international retinue, the lifeguards. Four troopers of the lifeguards are made up of three South Africans, two of whom, by the way, are brothers. The fourth member of the retinue is from Ghana today. And that international flavour, Ben, really does reflect where we are today, not just in the UK, but the armed forces too. It does, Hugh, and I'm always struck by the sort of two personas of the parade. On the one hand, a timeless classic remains unchanged for year on year, but on the other hand, below that, uh, very much the diversity of society and the contribution of the Commonwealth nations uh, to our armed forces are represented. Also reflects, in a way, the interest around the world in the parade, which seems to get uh, greater every year. It does, and I was very interested to find out that uh, over a million Germans tuned in uh, to watch this last year. And no doubt they'll be doing the same again this year around the world, not to mention the many members of the British Armed Forces deployed overseas at the moment. Captain Kevin Davis, Director of Music of the Lifeguards, leading the mounted bands of the Household Cavalry. Queen's Birthday Parade, of course, famous for the appearance of the mounted bands and it's the second time that Captain Davis has uh, directed the mounted bands for the birthday parade. As Sovereign and Colonel-in-Chief, the Queen has taken salute, of course, for many, many years at the birthday parade. First time in her own right was in 1952. And in that uh, first time, back in 1952, it was the Scots Guards actually providing the escort then too, as it is today.
Prince William, the Duke of Cambridge, with the other Royal Colonels, as the mounted bands turn into the approach road, and they tell the thousands waiting in the stands that this parade will begin in a few minutes' time. It's uh, William's first ceremonial duty on horseback, first time you've seen him in a bearskin as well, and as uh, Ben was telling us, he's been uh, practicing in the past few weeks. We're watching the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh making their way for this birthday parade. And as we see the Duke there, Ben, it's worth remembering we have grandfather, father and grandson riding on parade as colonels of Foot Guards regiments. Yes, here we do, and I think uh, this is the very first time in history uh, that this has ever happened. So a very special day, uh, not only from my point of view as an Irish Guardsman, to have Prince William on parade as a colonel, but also very much from the uh, point of view of the royal family and the uniqueness of the, uniqueness of the occasion for them. Prince William riding Wellesley, and Claire was uh, telling us a little about the preparations for the horses earlier. Um, you know Wellesley rather well, don't you, Ben? I do, I do, and what a brilliant horse he is. I mean, I think the essence of uh, Lincoln's sort of introductory uh, presentation, you know, reflected the fact that you have to get to a point where you can ignore uh, the fact that you aren't necessarily confident on the, ho confident on the horse, but you are... Uh, practice to a degree that you know you can concentrate concentrate on the parade and not worry about uh, what the horse is going to do next and some of these horses are superbly uh, schooled and it's a huge ask of, for them really to to tolerate the crowds the flags and all the other movement on the day so they are remarkably well behaved on this occasion great sight of the sovereign's escort making their way along to the parade ground the lifeguards in their red tunics, the blues and rolls will follow later, the third and fourth divisions in their dark blue tunics. And we can hear some young voices shouting because I'm told there are a thousand youngsters from Scouts and Brownies and Boys Brigade from all over the UK lining that route along the enclosure. There is what we call a youth enclosure there. Um, groups are invited to attend in uniform as representatives of their respective organisations and there will certainly be some of those encouraging Prince William and the Queen as they pass on their way to the parade ground. Jack Hargreaves is the head coachman. It's his fifth time on parade. Spent 23 years in the army. Today riding McCarthy, the hand horse, is Jasper. And among those in the stands today too, there are 10 in pensioners from the Royal Hospital Chelsea. Chelsea pensioners who always get invited and to enjoy the spectacle today. Looking forward to saluting as the Queen arrives, and I'm glad to say now enjoying a little bit of sunshine on Horse Guards Parade too. Coachman salutes the colour. The Royal Colonels do likewise. And then we have the non-Royal Colonels following. Lord Guthrie, Colonel of the Lifeguards, and Lieutenant General James Buckwell of the Coldstream Guards. So the Queen's Birthday Parade of 2011 is about to begin. At the stroke of 11, the Queen will step onto the saluting base. The Royal Standard will be released. The field officer, Lincoln Jopp, will give his command and then the national anthem will be played.
Well, the Queen's first duty is to inspect the line of foot guards. That's traditionally accompanied by the massed bands. And there we have the senior director of music, Lieutenant Colonel Graham Jones of the Coldstream Guards, his fourth and final birthday parade after a long and distinguished career. Preparing to conduct a fond kiss. That's a selection of melodies associated with the bard Robbie Burns, arranged by Major Douglas Robertson, who was there in among the band. He's director of music of the Scots Guards, another one of these distinguished musicians. He has a long career of 40 years behind him. He's retiring early next year. Music to act and be done, arranged by Major Douglas Robertson. Queen inspecting the line in her capacity as Colonel in Chief of all seven regiments of the Household Division. These are, of course, the personal troops of the Queen, Sovereign's official bodyguards. Queen today wearing the brooch of the regiment trooping its colour, the first battalion Scots Guards. And then, as the inspection continues, important to underline again what the relationship is here, what the, the strength of that relationship is. Yes, here it is, and it's a hugely proud day for all guardsmen to be on parade today. Obviously, as you mentioned, the household troops, but I think it's also worth reflecting on. These parades have their origins on the battlefields, and I think the soldiers would wish us to emphasize that first and foremost, they are fighting soldiers, and they carry their weapons today, which are the weapons they carried in Helmand province and Iraq before that. So they are you know, very much, first and foremost, fighting soldiers who perform to the excellent standards of the British Army, whether it's on parade or on operations overseas. And I've always you know, felt that there's so much rehearsal and preparation that gets us to this point of the parade, that this day is about showing off and each and every soldier out there thinking, I'm the smartest man, now look at me. And he's genuinely showing himself off to his sovereign and the public. Notable by their absence today, the King's Troop Royal Horse Artillery. They've taken the sensible precaution of staying away because of a recent bacterial infection affecting their horses. First time they've missed it in 14 years. It's sad that they're not here, but we look forward to seeing them again next year. Procession turns round past the Major of the Parade, Major Ben Ramsey of the Welsh Guards. 
And there's the Major General William Cubitt, his fourth and last time uh, at the birthday parade as Major General commanding the Household Division, preparing for his retirement. We're told at a farm in Norfolk. Ben, you know him well. I do indeed. Yes, after 34 years' service, uh, the Major General is retiring. I'd just like to take this opportunity to really pay a personal tribute to him. Um, having served under him first of all in Bosnia in the early 90s and then successively through uh, the last two decades really um, and lately, most lately as the Major General Commanding the Household Division and I think I speak on behalf of all those serving uh, in the Guards as a whole to wish them the very best for the future after a superb career and we look forward to um, all that lies ahead of him. No fewer than five drum majors on parade in their distinctive state dress, positioned at the head of each band, responsible for keeping time. There's the senior drum major, Ben Roberts of the Coldstream Guards, appointed in September last year, so this, a very big day for him, his first birthday parade. This is my first uh, Queen's birthday parade as a senior drum major. To wear the state dress jacket is probably the most rewarding thing, especially on Troopman of Colour as well. This is what my career is all about. You know, I've dreamt about this job ever since I joined the army. Being in charge of four drum majors and probably the best mass bands in the world on parade in front of Her Majesty the Queen. Quite a responsibility for Ben Roberts. Previously in the Corps of Drums of the battalion, he returned from Afghanistan in April. So his first duty is to lead the mass bands as they play one of the most famous and popular pieces, Les Huguenots, by Meyerbeer, arranged by Dan Godfrey. Big moment for the mass bands. It signifies that the birthday parade is underway. bands to change direction.
March is the Glaswegian. March written by Major Jimmy Howe, director of music of the Scots Guards between 1959 and 74. The lone drummer, Lance Corporal Gordon Prescott, has broken away. He's marching to a position to the right of the escort, preparing to beat the drummer's call. That will signal that the next phase of the parade is underway. Lance Corporal Prescott, who served in Af Afghanistan last year in the battalion intelligence cell. drummer's call, an echo of the days when all battlefield commands were given by a drumbeat. An orderly, Lance Corporal Ross Mabel, takes the regimental sergeant major's pace stick and that enables him to draw his sword. For the colour! Slow! Um. Remainder! Change! Um. Stand up! Peace! Escort for the colour! In close order! Progress! The eyes front, which is achieved with no word of command given. gives the order and the familiar tune of the British Grenadiers arranged by Jacob Cappy the escort marching off with pride and purpose on its way to take possession of the colour
and as we enjoy the escort on the move, Ben, it's worth thinking about the logistical problems they've had in recent months. Yes, it is, Hugh. I remember the year that we did it in 2009. We started our first rehearsal on the 27th of April in order to get us properly prepared for today. And, of course, the Scots Guards, being based in Catrick, have had to move to Purbright, uh, where they've conducted their rehearsals over the last six weeks or so. And uh, I'm sure they're very much looking forward to returning to North Yorkshire in the coming week. The escort will stop some 20 paces from the colour party. The music stops, they'll be ready for that transfer to take place. Senior Director of Music, Graeme Jones, moving through the band to the front, ready for this next phase to begin. Regimental Sergeant Major Warrant Officer 1 Ali McKenzie marching from the rear of the escort. He'll be collecting the ensign. Lieutenant Tom Ogilvy on his way, and they will then go and collect the colour. Ali McKenzie, who, when he was an instructor at Sandhurst, had as one of his cadets Officer Cadet Wales, now Prince William, Duke of Cambridge, who is here today, of course, as one of the Royal Colonels. to the colour Science Sergeant Major resume their positions with the escort. Interesting to note, of course, the escort for the colour previously has now become the escort to the colour, ready for that trooping to take place. Advances in slow time. 
The tune is Escort to the Colour, arranged by Lieutenant Colonel Richard Ridings. A mesmerising manoeuvre, the spin wheel, performed by the mass bands, allowing them to change direction while keeping the same formation. It's a bit of a miracle. Among those enjoying the spectacle, Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge. Soon the band will cut out, and then we'll be ready for the formal trooping to begin. chosen to carry the colour, the trip it down the ranks, is Lieutenant Tom Ogilvy. He was commissioned into the Scots Guards in December 2009. He deployed to Afghanistan last year. Certainly conscious of his family's military heritage. His great-great-uncle, Sir Gilchrist Ogilvy, served with the Scots Guards. He lost his life in the Great War. Being the ensign, it is a huge honour to carry the colours of the battalion and what goes with that is an expectation to be the smartest man on parade and really it's a tremendous honour for me because it's the guardsmen's colours, they put everything into fighting for them and the pressure that I feel is really just doing a job worthy of them. My primary focus on the day will just be trying to ensure that uh, I stay in step with everyone behind me, <laughs> that the colours remain off the ground and are presented properly and also I'll probably keep a beady eye out for my mum, give her a little, little wink or a nod. Very proud moment. For Tom and his family, including his mother, Helen, who's in the stands today. Colour presented by the Queen at Windsor back in 2002, that was the year of the Golden Jubilee, of course. Battle honours include the Falkland Islands, 1982, and Tumbledown Mountain, because eight members of the battalion lost their lives, 41 were wounded in that battle. Ben, it's important, really important, to underline the significance of the colour today. I think it is, Hugh. Um, in many ways, its origins are rather old-fashioned, but today I always think relevance is as strong as ever in the sense it is the manifest representation of the contribution of a particular regiment to the history of the British Army. And it's interesting to reflect when you look at it, the battle honours that have seen the army adapt and to change to the differing circumstances to the nature of conflict required at that specific time. And there's a history and a great story behind each one of those battle honours which we're enormously proud of. Equally, uh, I think that the medals are an interesting reflection on all that has been done by the British Army in the last two decades, really. I was first on this parade in 1992, and most Guardsmen on parade had a single medal in 
um, from their contribution to Northern Ireland, of course. And now many, many soldiers on parade have numerous medals, uh, really reflecting the huge amount of uh, conflict the army's been involved in and the contribution these soldiers have all made. Escort to the colour will advance. Left! Turn! Escort to the colour! And arms! Numbers one to five guards will retire. reposition and prepare for the march past when Her Majesty will take the salute. The music is Hazelmere, composed by Drum Major Tom Burkett. Time is underway. A grand operatic slow march from Norma, composed by Bellini, arranged by the way by Trevor Sharp. What we call a neutral slow march. And at this stage, Ben, just wondering what kind of message people on parade are given before it starts. I think, Hugh, before I have to touch on that, I just I think it's worth reflecting that uh, imagine Lincoln's beginning to feel uh, that things are, are perhaps going according to plan at this stage. And I remember um, some relief coming over to me as we be went into the sort of march past. But having reflected on all that the parade means, and uh, before the morning 
we did this. I gathered the guards together because I wanted to try and inculcate a sense that they were much more than the ceremonial soldiers you see here, but they were rather like gladiators going into a coliseum where they were going to show themselves off, not only to the nation and our sovereign, but to our enemies and those who watch and see the British Army and all it means to be a soldier in the British Army. And we would like to send you know, a sense of a strategic message in a way to everybody watching that this army is here on parade as the way it has always been for many years with all the values and standards that it's always had uh, reflected here today, just as you can see now. Officer, then Colonel Lincoln John, followed by the Major of the Parade, Major Ben Ramsey of the Welsh Guards, who received his MBE today in the birthday honour, so our congratulations to him. He's been second in command of the 1st Battalion Welsh Guards since March of last year. Right flank. Senior Company, 1st Battalion Scots Guards. I'm told the tallest guardsman is David Kruptek, who is 6 feet 8 inches tall. I mean, it does make you think, Ben, that these are men of big stature, not just physically. They really are. And uh, traditionally, the tallest men in the army have been in the household division, but uh, in recent years that, is, that has changed. And uh, you can see um, some very, very tall uh, men on parade and some not so tall men, but they make a huge contribution nevertheless, whatever their size or their background or whatever, you know, wherever they're from. Watching with interest, the Prime Minister, the Defence Secretary is here too. Among those men too in the 1st Battalion, right flank, there are brothers, Lance Corporal Stephen Scapel. Guardsman Scott Scaffold. They're both from Aberdeen. Steve in the reconnaissance platoon in B Company and uh, in number two guard today, actually. He, I think these are probably just, um, you know, a, a representative of the many families on parade in, in so many ways. We can think of um, fathers and sons, the O'Gorman father and son Brian and Sam, who are both on horseback today from the Irish Guards, and there are second and third generation guardsmen on parade today as well. Standard. It's called the Flourish. The colours which have undergone a bit of restoration work this year because the colour was taken to Iraq twice and to Afghanistan once. The Major General decided that it needed a bit of repair work. It's looking magnificent today. The ensign raises it. That's called the Recover. We have number two guard, of course, B Company, 1st Battalion Scots Guards. Colonel of the Scots Guards looking on proudly. 
held that appointment since 1974. Number three guard approaching, F Company, Scots Guards. Grenadier Guard, Slow March, Scipio by Handel. Number four guard, Lymagan Company, Grenadier Guard. Music changes again to signal the arrival of the Welsh Guards. Men of Halle, Prince of Wales Company, 1st Battalion Welsh Guards. And a final change. Figaro by Mozart, that is the slow march of the Coldstream Guards. Number six guard today, number seven company Coldstream Guards. Followed by the adjutant of the parade, Captain Hamish Barr. salutes music changes to Balmoral Castle composed by Major James Howe the neutral slow march field officer rides out and salutes the Queen that the first phase of the march past is complete it means he can prepare for the next phase you can really appreciate the precision of the movements, the power of the parade, and also the richness of the music, which this year has a Scottish flavour to it. The Pipers looking resplendent in their brand new Royal Stuart Tartan, and all of the 1st Battalion Scots Guards have new tunics. They'll be particularly grateful that today is not a particularly hot one, because on a very hot day, a guardsman can lose up to six pounds in weight, but we've got a slight breeze. We've had a shower of rain to dampen the dust, and it is very cool, which is a blessing for them. And and also for the horses who are standing patiently and waiting, the flies are being kept away from them and the household cavalry waiting their turn on the edge of horse carts.
So with a burst of energy and purpose and style, the march past begins in quick time. A neutral march, first of all. The Road to the Isles, arranged by Mage James Howe. And then we'll have Murray Firth, composed by Rod McKenzie. The great moment in this year's parade as the Pipers move forward, taking pride of place. 16 Scots Gas Pipers, four Irish Gas Pipers in the mass bands today. The Scots Gas Pipers, full Highland dress, Royal Stuart Tartan and blue doublets. Today and just to underline the Scottish flavour, 225 of them are Scots Guardsmen. One of them, I mentioned him already, Regimental Sergeant Major Ali McKenzie from Stornoway. The Road to the Isles naturally would be his favourite piece of music. Guard, Guardsman Jason Wharton, who was shot through the legs while on tour in Helmand. Remarkably, been able to make a full recovery on parade today with number two guard. Yes, Hugh, and it's brilliant to see him on parade. And I have to say, I pay tribute to the Guardsmen, not only on parade, but more widely, and all the soldiers of the British Army for their absolute resilience and fortitude uh, shown in Afghanistan in recent years. It's amazing to, to see some of them bounce back from very serious injuries so quickly and show such utter determination to go back and join their colleagues and return to the charge. Guards recognizing Neil and Laddie. Quick march. Grenadier Guards now. The Rising of the Lark, which is the quick march of the Welsh Guards. Ham, the quick march with the Goldstrom Guards. The 
and into the neutral quick march, which is called Scottish Emblem, composed by Archie Ellis. As the field officer rides out again and salutes the Queen with two special movements of the sword, informing Her Majesty that the march party quick time has been completed. Commanding officer, of course, marking a very proud moment, not just for him, but his family and his colleagues. He led the Scots Guards on operations in Afghanistan, leading them again today, as they wish the Queen this happy birthday. We are always striving to produce excellence in action, whether that's on the birthday parade or whether it's in Afghanistan. These men, they are, quite frankly, some of the most extraordinarily tough and resilient and brilliant men I've ever come across. These are the men that I took on operations. These are the men who received their Afghanistan medal, and those same men with that same medal are gonna have the opportunity to look their sovereign in the eye as they march past, and that's very special for me. His thoughts on today's duties. I wonder, Ben, how you were feeling at this stage. Well, Hugh, you're about halfway or so, and uh, you know, you're not feeling overconfident, but you, begin, you are beginning to feel that uh, it's gone well, it's going well. And I think from all we've seen this morning, it's been a fantastic parade so far, and the Scots Guards are doing a fabulous job, and Lincoln is too, so he'll be getting into the swing of it now, feeling very much uh, it's an occasion to show off and put his battalion firmly in front of the, uh, the Queen. And allowing yourself the luxury of trying to spot some familiar well, people yes, in the crowd or not. I remember so well trying to uh, find my wife and children in the crowd. Eventually I did. I was probably more worried to see if they were actually behaving themselves. My children were paying any attention to what was going on or just generally distracting other people. But it's probably worth saying there's a very, very serious element to the families being here to watch this parade today, Hugh, because of the demands we asked of the soldiers, and Lincoln sort of mentioned it in his piece just now. You know, these are extraordinary, special, special people, the soldiers we see on parade, but they are supported by truly special people in their families who stay at home. In many ways, some of the easier part is to fight the Taliban. It's very tough to uh, stay at home and look after the family. Open order, left and right, first!
And now a slight change of pace as the mounted bands of the Household Cavalry move on to the parade ground, led by the drum horses. I saw them being prepared early this morning at about five o'clock. And they are the only horses in the British Army who hold an officer's rank, that of Major. Cavalry now making their way onto the ground, led by the lifeguards with their white plume and the blues and royals behind them with the red plumes. And you can see here how impressive they are in numbers and those plumes adding to their height. And in battle, this would have been a formidable sight. The cuirasses glinting in the sunlight, the jackboots as well gleaming. They took about 10 hours to polish. The Squadron Household Cavalry Regiment has recently returned from their latest tour of Afghanistan in May 2011. The troops alternate between the Mounted Regiment and the Armoured Reconnaissance Regiment, usually spending two years with each. There are 250 horses in total in the Household Cavalry Mounted, Mounted Regiment. About 235 black horses, 14 greys, and three drum horses. Escort, the field officer today, Major Nicholas Van Katzen, who deployed to Afghanistan back in 2008 and was there again in 09 10. Um, some will remember him from Royal Wedding Day because he was the escort commander of the captain's escort, which was with William and Catherine uh, as they returned from the abbey to the palace. Captain leading the way there, Captain Simon Lucas, riding Empress today. And at the rear we have the Farriers, their dark blue tunics carrying their glinting axes. The lifeguards farrier there on the left with the black plume. of the lifeguards queuing the neutral trot it's called money musk posed by daniel dow at 3.30 this morning to prepare, but they've been practicing for months. And bear in mind that only one in 20 of the household cavalry have ridden before they join the regiment. 
but what you're seeing here is the bond between a trooper and his horse. It's based on trust. There's so much to think about in terms of getting everything right that you can't be worrying about your horse. The best of them actually know and seem to learn the commands themselves. And in battle, that trust was crucial because over a million horses were employed by the British Army in the First World War. And sadly, only 62,000 of those returned home. Eighty-five horses and 610 dogs in service with the armed forces. The only animals still employed regularly on current operations are the dogs for guarding military personnel and property, for tracking down, attacking the enemy and for searching for the wounded and sniffing out explosives. If you take a close look at the chin straps there, the way they're worn. The Blues and Royals, and you can see there, wear the chin strap on the chin, whilst the lifeguards wear it on the lower lip. Mounted bands move forward to salute Her Majesty, Director of Music, and the kettle drummers crossing their sticks in their special form of salute. Completing the second birthday parade for Captain Kevin Davis as Director of Music. a great sight. Mounted bands wearing the oldest ceremonial uniform in the regular army it can only be worn if a member of the royal family is present and that is of course by permission of the monarch. Or there is an exception at the request of the Lord Mayor because traditionally the Lord Mayor paid for the uniform. Lots of interest above Horse Guards Arch. Earl of Wessex, Duchess of Cambridge, Duchess of Cornwall, Duke of York, watching with amusement but interest too. Waiting for the signal, director of music turning his horse in to show that everything is ready. Here's the challenge. The eyes front, again, no word of command. 
ripples down the ranks. So to the tune of the adjutant by Tom Burkett, the guards form into six divisions. That's ready, of course, to march off at the end of this parade. Turned to regimental sergeant major Ali McKenzie by the orderly. Garrison Sergeant Major Bill Mott of the Welsh Guard. It's his sharp eye for detail, his meticulous preparation, which guarantees the success of so many of these events. And today, uh, on his right arm, can't quite see it there, he's wearing uh, a new badge, new officer's badge of rank, uh, which was presented in time for the royal wedding. Field officer and brigade waiting prepares to ask Her Majesty's permission to march off. Your Majesty's guards are ready to march off, ma'am. And Colonel Lincoln Job has uh, sought and received Her Majesty's permission. So now repositions himself on the St. James's Park flank of Horse Guards Parade as we make the final preparations for the end of the parade.
some of the departures already taking place those members of the royal family watching the parade from the Duke of Wellington's old office have already left and are on the Mall they pass through Admiralty Arch in lovely sunshine and there we have Prince Harry saluting but very broad smile from Catherine Duchess of Cambridge her first birthday parade as a member of the royal family indeed her first ceremonial occasion since that wedding at the end of April Prince Harry who was promoted to captain within the Army Air Corps earlier this year in recognition of his service um, in the armed forces now known as Captain Harry Wales in the military and there we have the Earl of Wessex Prince Edward today wearing the uniform of the London Scottish in his role as Royal Colonel of the London Regiment that appointment was made on the 1st of May this year it's a territorial army infantry battalion within the Guards Division and Lady Louise of course smiling and looking as if she's enjoying every moment of the day as she did indeed on the Royal Wedding when she was one of the bridesmaids back on Horse Guards Parade the massed bands leading the way for the Queen's departure. The march off music, the crags of Tumble Down Mountain, including, of course, the wonderful sound of the pipes, composed by James Riddle, arranged by Michael Gray. Just a quick word about the tune because. It was apparently composed in the days immediately following the Battle of Tumbledown in that effort to retake the Falklands back in 1982. those who were missing from today's parade. The space behind me would normally have been filled by the King's Troop. We hope very much that they'll be back next year. And also warm wishes in retirement to Spartacus. Sparky, the drum horse who'd done 16 Queen's Birthday parades, running, now retired at the grand old age of 21. And he's down on the Somerset farm that he was first bought from. But the crowds here, and I spoke to a lot of them on the way up from Buckingham Palace, were so looking forward to seeing Prince William riding at Trooping the Colour for the first time. And also Catherine Duchess of Cambridge. They have not been disappointed and it has been a hugely enjoyable and impressive troop. Tomorrow, the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh will be attending a service in St George's Chapel, Windsor, and that's a special service to mark the Duke's 90th birthday, to be followed by a reception at Windsor Castle. Music changes to Black Bear. The rousing oi traditionally sounded when the drums stopped playing in the Black Bear, punctuating the tune with a rousing shout. And there they go again. They turn onto the Mall. And it's a good moment, Ben, to ask you, really, as you make your way along the Mall and as commanding officer, you're riding alongside Her Majesty. What is that experience? It's um, a mixture between uh, relief and uh, disbelief, I suppose, to an extent that you uh, have successfully completed it without forgetting a single word, uh, as Lincoln has done today, without the horse 
uh, managing to uh, do something he shouldn't have done. So you're going down the mile extremely happily, looking forward to uh, going back into Buckingham Palace, actually, for a drink with the royal family. I remember just going into uh, Buckingham Palace and riding next to the Prince of Wales. He turned to me as he got in and he said, wow, that must be a relief. Uh, and he was right. And, uh, of course, I mustn't forget the fact that uh, after the parade, many of the soldiers just go on to duties and they mount the Queen's Guard for another 24 hours and will be guarding Her Majesty in Buckingham Palace. So as the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh make their way back to the palace, our coverage of the parade here on BBC One comes to an end. But don't forget, as I mentioned earlier, you can see the fly past that it is today going to be a very, very impressive fly past and the traditional balcony appearance will happen in a short while. You can press the red button on the handset and we'll have continuing coverage for you. And of course, we'll include all that in our highlights this evening on BBC Two at half past seven. So the 59th birthday parade of the Queen's reign is over. We look ahead to the Diamond Jubilee next year. The special celebrations already being planned. And Colonel Ben Farrell and from me, all of the BBC team at Horse Guards, thank you for watching and goodbye.